Tony Jones is the theologian in residence at Solomon's Porch. He teaches at several seminaries, and he earned his Ph.D. at Princeton Theological Seminary. He also blogs daily at patheos.com. Big time blog guy, popular blog. Tony, thanks, thanks so much for joining us again today on Harvest. I know that uh, recently you've decided to uh, take on a new project where you obviously do a lot of writing. I think you post something like 11 posts a week mm -hmm. at, uh, at the blog. Uh, you've written several books, but you have a new project, new book that you want to write about uh, the topic of prayer. Yeah. What, what kind of brought this about? What made? Because I, I, I'm I'm guessing that maybe your angle will be slightly different yeah. than the the standard evangelical yeah. book on prayer. That's probably true. I'm writing a book called Why Pray? Mm -hmm. Question mark. One man search for an answer. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, two two things happened actually. One was I'm a I'm a social media guy like you. I'm kind of in that world a lot, all day, every day, and. Uh, after I finished my PhD, I kind of took a deep breath. That, that's a big project to write. And I went to all my Facebook fans and I was like, hey, what do you think I should write a book on? And I thought they'd want me to write a book on, oh, I don't know, what's wrong with the church in America or this kind of this kind of stuff I blog about. Yeah. And overwhelmingly, the poll, I did an po online poll, and overwhelmingly people wanted me to write about prayer. And you didn't like, see that coming at all? No, because yeah. I, I wrote several books on prayer back in the early 2000s, and I kind of thought I'd said what I wanted to say about prayer and spirituality. Yeah. People really wanted me to write about that. And then about that same time, I, got, I've got, I get emails like this, and, but this one really hit me. A man wrote me an email, and he said that his son, well, he was home with his kids, and his three-year-old son uh, went, let, got up from his nap and went out and locked himself in dad's pickup in the driveway. And it was in Texas in the summer, mm -hmm. and the son died. Mm. And then he found his son. He didn't even know his son had, had, had gotten out of his nap. And he said, I've been, it was interesting. He didn't say, why did God let this happen? It wasn't a question of what we would call theodicy or yeah. why do bad things happen. Yeah. What, what, why did God not control the situation yeah. or intervene? Yeah. That wasn't even his question. Yeah. His question was, ever since that happened, I've been praying crying out to God. My wife has been praying and crying out to God, and we don't hear anything. Hmm. It is silence. Why does God not answer our prayers? Yeah. And I thought, holy mackerel. Yeah. For everybody, for, look, for everybody who calls into the prayer line, for everybody who receives answers to prayer, there's another person out there who hears silence from God. Yeah. So you ask people this, you know, and some people, I think there are ma two major answers. When, you, when somebody says, why do you pray? S s half the people say, we pray to change God. We pray for things so God will do things. We claim things, God will give them to us. We pray for healing, and God, he, that tumor went away. You know? which, which as a theologian, it kind of raises some interesting questions, I think, about who, who is this God? The very nature of God, like God's sitting around. I remember reading way back in the day, reading This Present Darkness, you know, the, those old novels mm -hmm. and spiritual warfare novels, and thinking, wow, it's like, it's like God is handcuffed until people pray enough and like the prayer thermometer gets high enough and then God's like, okay, now I can release my angels or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's an odd view of God that God can only do things when there's enough kind of prayer in the prayer gas tank or something. But then there's a whole nother group of people and you say, why do you pray? pray? And they say, oh, prayer isn't to change God. God never changes. God is unchangeable. Yeah. Prayer changes us. Prayer brings us into alignment with God's will. Prayer is all about us. Hmm. And my answer to that is, I mean, if the first one is like, well, that's kind of an odd view of God. But when I hear that second answer that prayer changes us, I'm like, well, then who needs God? Like, yeah. be a Buddhist. Yeah. You know, if, if, if prayer is simply therapeutic to get your, to like quiet your spirit, and mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with any interaction with the divine being of God, then... I don't really see why I pray, like meditate. You don't really need prayer. You know what I find interesting is, is here we have, last time you were on, we talked about the Gospels. We have Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, and he says this is how you should pray. And it's the Lord's Prayer. Everybody knows it, our Father who art in heaven, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't seem like many people actually pray that way. Why no, is that? Not many do. I mean, a lot of mainline Christians pray like that every Sunday in church, yeah. and a lot of Catholics Ma pray that. Just recite that exact recite prayer. Recite that exact prayer. But yeah. what's funny is Jesus doesn't say, say this prayer. He says, pray like this. This is the way, yeah. This is the model. And yeah. then what's also interesting, I'll say, is Jesus says, Jesus doesn't, that's a, he's not actually praying on the Sermon on the Mount. 
He's teaching on prayer. Um, yeah. He doesn't say, bow your heads, let's pray. Yeah. And then he says, don't pray in public, yes. which is so interesting to be on a TV show where people pray in public all the time. Yeah. And we go to churches where people pray in public. People pray in public all the time. Jesus didn't pray in public. Yeah. In fact, he said, don't, he said, don't. Yeah. go to a private room where no one can see you and only it's between you and your father in heaven and he can see your heart yeah. because the Pharisees pray in public and put ashes on their head. And make don't a big show pray and et cetera, yeah. in public. That's so, one thing. And the other thing Jesus says about prayer, his teaching mainly is keep asking for stuff and God will give it to you. So yeah. it's like the man who goes to his neighbor's house in the middle of the night and says, bang, 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 I want a loaf of bread. And the friend inside says, go away. It's the middle of the night. Come back tomorrow. Bang, bang, bang. No, I need a loaf of bread. And the guy says, no, go away. My whole family is in bed. Leave us alone. Bang, bang, bang. No, please give me a loaf of bread. And the guy's like, I'll give you a loaf of bread if you just go away. So he gives a loaf of bread. And Jesus says, this is what prayer is like. Yeah. That's what prayer is like? <laughs> Keep bugging God for something and God gives you something like. So Jesus' message is persistence. Ask for things and God will give them to you. Yeah. But you say that now, and a lot of people are like, no, prayer is about changing me, not God. Well, that's not what Jesus said. So I'm like trying to yeah. find a way to say there's truth in both. There must be some interaction between us and God in the event of prayer. Something must happen. And I know that there's a lot of folks, they look up to you, you have the, you have the PhD, you're a theologian. They go through a hard time in their life like the story that, that you mentioned. And I, I'm sure they come to you and say, what is going on here? But I know that for you, the, the, for the theodicy question, there just really isn't a good answer. No, th there's, no, so one, what, there's what, no one answer. What, what, do you, right. what do you say to people when they bring you these, these, these stories, other than writing a book about it? Yeah. You know, how do you bless th this person? Right, right. Well, one thing I did with, with this particular uh, man is I befriended him. And I mean, we've, we've e we email a lot. We've talked on the phone. Um, and I, you know, my answer is primarily what we talked about when I've been on the show previously about the crucifixion is that if nothing else, know this, that in Jesus' death on the cross, when he cries out, when he quotes Psalm 22 and says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's basically crying out, God, why are you silent? In my hour of deepest agony, you're silent. Yeah. This is God crying out to God mm -hmm. about God's silence. At least I hope there's some comfort for this guy and for me and for you and for all of us who experience the silence of God, that even God experienced the yeah. silence of God. And, and when thinking about prayer from just a very basic standpoint, I mean, for me, and I think that you, you might agree, when you look at uh, our, our typical American culture, you know, we see the guys praying before a football game or scoring right. a touchdown or whatever. And a lot of Christians really, really love this idea of, you know, we've even, you know, talked about, you know, praying publicly or, or whatever, which that's not even necessarily the part that bothers me, but it, it, it's, what about the actual needs of real people yeah. around the world? I mean, it, it, recently, fairly recently was the Super Bowl. And there was a poll that showed that a, a, a large number of Americans believe that God had some, has some role to play in these big sporting events which made me think, well, then why does he not have a role in world hunger? No, this is really a problematic element. And in fact, I, I address it in, my very, in the very first chapter of this book on prayer that I'm writing right now. And like, some people think God gets them a spot at the mall, a good parking spot. Like right. they pray for a good parking spot at the mall. And meanwhile, there's civil war, like tearing apart countries in Africa. Yeah. And children are being hacked to death with machetes. Yes. And God cares about your parking spot at the mall? Seriously, like, take a step back and think about this mm -hmm. and think there must be a more sophisticated way for us to understand God's interaction with humanity in the, in the event of prayer. Well, when you get the book done, we'll have to do it. We'll have to do a Skype I love and, it. and figure out what, what I'd like to see what you come up with. Yeah. Tony Jones, everybody, if you'd like to connect with Tony, the website's tonyj.net. Or the blog is at patheos.com backslash blogs backslash Tony Jones. It is the Theo bloggy. Harvest will continue right after this.